gonna make um, a request video, but I realize now um, I don't have the energy. It's about 2.30 anyway, so I'm gonna have to wrap up video making soon because people will come home. Um, but I thought I'd just sort of freestyle ramble about nothing. Maybe just sort of sit here like this for a few minutes. Um, God, yeah, I'm so tired. I'm so glad I decided not to make that proper, like, more structured video I've been planning for a while. Because I just... Um, I'm filming this the day after I had bonsai work. And um, I'm always pretty tired the day after. So I think when I'm scheduling um, videos and stuff, I need to take that into account. I don't work every week. But on the weeks that I do the day after, I should just be like, yeah... Not gonna be a day I can make videos. Um, I need a bit more time out, I think. So maybe what I do on these day after bonsai days is I could just edit videos or I need to do some painting. I have this goal to paint something every month and I also wanna paint something for the local gallery before I run out of time for that. So that's something I could do. Also next week, I don't have bonsai work, but we do have a worker coming to fix our roof. Um, actually I am in the room where the roof leak is. I can't be bothered to turn the, the camera around though. Um, apparently this problem has been here for like 18 years though, ever since we renovated the place. So I would have still been in early high school. Um, we lived across the road for a bit. Um, wow. Yeah, that was a long time ago. <laughs> I'm getting so old! Um... Yeah, no, but it's, it like, had a really bad leak when we came back from that cruise. I've still got to edit those videos, oh my god. Oh, there's so much to do. So there's that. Um, anyway, it's just like, more and more things we need to fix up around the house. It's an old, you know, like, I think they call them federation houses. Really old school. I mean, that's why this door looks kind of ornate-ish. Like, it's not just a flat door. It's got these bloody things and these bloody things. Like, that's not a modern style. Um, I mean, I guess some people would still choose this style today. But, you know, it's pretty much been like this since we moved in when I was, like, two. <laughs> I think Mikey was born after we moved into this house like the day after or something ridiculous like that, like really close timing. So we've been in this house forever. This house has been here forever. Um, why was I talking about the age of this house? I don't know, we had it renovated. Oh, I think 2001 was when we lived across the road. Um, yeah, and so they added, they, they changed that back room used to have this really hard slate floor, black slate floor, which was not good for Mikey because he used to have drop seizures and, you know, hit his head on that. We had to have a helmet on him to stop that. Um, he doesn't have that problem in the same way these days. Um, the medication's working pretty well. Um, so we changed that side of the house and added an upstairs. Um, oh my god, I'm so tired! Oh, what's else, what else is going on? But yeah, no, it's an old house. Um, and, you know, we had some construction going out in the other room. And then, of course, because of that, we had to get the floor done. But then because of the floor being done, we had to remove a door, which was kind of um, worn out anyway. Like, one of the bits had broken, and so you had to be careful, like, how you pulled it out. You had to lift it slightly and then slide it. It's a sliding kind of door. Um... So because of the floor, we had to actually take that off um, to let the floor guy get in and do that. And then my parents were like, hey, we should just replace the door already. So now we're getting that door fixed. And while we're getting that door fixed, we're going to get the other sliding doors changed um, because they're getting pretty old and they're quite heavy and it's, you know, not the most practical thing. I don't know if there was a reason that we did it that way way back when, because I was a kid, so I wasn't paying attention to any of this stuff, and I kind of don't pay that much attention even now, but, um, yeah, so that's going to be done, um, the pest control guy found a thing that's a little bit rotted outside, because, like, there's a plant, 
around it or something so I don't know at some point we'll probably have to get that fixed also we've got a lot of sandstone in the house and I don't know there's one bit of that that's not looking too good so we've got to get that fixed and then of course the roof leaking so we've got to get that fixed and that's a reasonably big job as well because what's happening with that is all the water is um the, all the water is hitting like a wall or something this is what the roof guy said it's hitting the wall and then it's um getting stuck there and right the water level rises and it it's not draining fast enough to stop it rising up to a point where it starts leaking leaking into the house um so he's got to do like some box cutter thing that i haven't looked up so i don't know how to explain it but from the what he was telling mum that i overheard it's like he builds like a little box reservoir kind of thing which um is able to empty faster than it rises up so yeah i don't understand how that works because i haven't seen what it looks like and i don't know how to imagine i should look up what he means by box cutter roofing box cutter google search um yeah but i don't know clearly something that can do that and he's got like a guarantee on it so you know with the warranty and stuff if there's any problems He's pretty much guaranteeing we won't ever have a problem again, so we just got to wait. Once that's done, we got to wait until there's another massive downpour, and then when it works, we can finally patch over those um, peeling paint. And where are my glasses? Where are my glasses? You know, peeling paint and like I don't know. I don't think that's mold, but it's like some kind of dirt stuff that's probably been trickling in from upstairs, and like there's wallpaper that's a little bit bubbly there and oh dear that's going to be a big job fit cleaning all that up as well um i can see a little bit of a crack there oh dear and then you know things are getting a bit old so probably need to paint some stuff i'm pretty sure mum painted this you know she gets bored every now and then and to save a buck she likes to paint stuff herself um but because she didn't, couldn't be bothered to get a ladder, there are some things like where you can actually see it's been painted almost to the top and then not quite to the top. And she's just like, eh, she'll be right, mate. So mum's Japanese, but she's Aussie. <laughs> yeah. She, she's lived here longer than she ever lived in Japan. So she's Aussie. She just still has the accent and she's kind of cute in the same Japanese way. Oh, what else can I talk about? So plans, um... Yeah, no, I'm going to make a video with a bit more structure um, that's going to be fashion themed. Um, I want to give a shout out to Steve Allegory who sent me money for Christmas because that made me able to buy the thing that I'm going to do when I finally get around to it. Um, so thank you for that. Um, oh, I'm so tired. What else? Um, oh. So, Reflected Tone asked me about my trip to America, I think, and I actually found my travel diary, so I'll get that out. That's actually the video I was going to make now, is like, give you a summary of my America trip and then read out that little diary that I found, which I haven't actually read through yet. I just saw that, oh, I actually did write about that. This is before Facebook. Because, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't join Facebook until... 2008 I think um, and this trip happened at the end of 2006 so yeah I haven't read through that diary but I guess I'll read it on camera and, um, I think maybe I wrote it thinking that someone might read it so hopefully there's nothing embarrassing in there um, did anything embarrassing happen on that trip though I don't think so but I don't remember it was such a long time ago um, that, that travel diary also has some stuff from, I think 2004, I went on a trip to Japan, and yeah, that's when someone gave me that travel diary to write down the stuff. So if you're interested in my 2004 trip to Japan, I could read that as well, but I don't remember. That might have been the one where I went to Kyoto and got dressed up as a geisha. I really should scan that photo at some point. Um... What else can I talk about? I don't know, I'm just tired. Bonsai work's going well though. Um, but yeah, yesterday, oh, just like we were working on the starter plants. So not like the nicely done bonsai. These are the starter plants. So if you want to make bonsai yourself, you buy a starter plant and then you pot it. 
um, and they, they run classes, so, you know, those guys use them a lot. Um, and then you just get people coming in who want to buy that stuff. So we were working on them getting rid of the weeds, upgrading them to larger pots if they need it, if they've grown too much. Um, and I think that's what we did all day. It was only supposed to be in the beginning because, you know, um, we share the place with another um, group and that's just like regular, regular nursery sort of thing, I think. Um, and they were running the sprinkling system, so we couldn't go up to the back where we usually work, so we had to work in the front studio area, and, um, you know, so, like, what can we do while we're waiting? Let's work on all these starter plants, and, um, my gosh, it just multiplied. Like, we had, have all these benches, all the benches were full of plants. Um, I had my little station, and I was going from one side, like, you know, got a tray here, empty tray, doing them all out, put them on that. And then that tray becomes empty, so then you move those out, you get another one in, do all them. Um, yeah, and gosh, some of the roots was just out of control. Um, you know, I guess that's why I'm employed, because sometimes there's not enough time for them to do all that without extra help. So, yeah, especially with, like, one lot, I just went into machine mode, and, you know, my boss was like, geez, can't keep up with you. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was good. The only downside is when you're working out in that front studio area, that's where the customers can come through, and so you can't have, like, heavy metal playing. So you either listen to the other mobs, um, piano music, or my boss was playing some other stuff that I wasn't really into. Um, but yeah, I know that job's going pretty well. Oh, I've got a bit of time off now so I can recharge, but then that build is coming in next week for a few days, so yeah, and I can't really film on the weekend because usually there's people around and even when they go out, I don't really know when they're going to come back, so the last thing I want to do is start filming a video only to be interrupted and, you know, feel awkward and not know where to pick up. Um, how long's this video gone for? 12 minutes. Is that enough? <laughs> uh, so probably alternate this with more ant videos. I also filmed a video with Hopi. Um, yeah, okay, I think that'll do, really. Or, I don't know, can we, can we get me on another tangent? I probably should have just live streamed so that people can throw me ideas. When should I live stream again? I don't know, I'm so tired I can't even hold a thought properly anymore. I really should have just had that nap. But I was sort of looking like, you know, I haven't filmed many videos, like proper videos. I've just been filming ant videos. Um, so, you know, if I don't make the video now, Mikey will come home and that's the end of my video making time. And because I'm going out tomorrow, I can't make a video. Then it's the weekend, because I'm filming on a Thursday. Then it's the weekend. Then on Monday, I'm going to really try and film that video I've been working on, like planning for a bit. Because if I don't get it done then... I will miss the deadline I've got, and it'll all be for nothing! Well, not nothing, because I get something nice out of it, but for the thing I'm doing it for. Why am I, like, being so weird and dancy? It's because I'm tired, and I just sort of... Um, and then Tuesday, yeah, I think I already talked about this, Mum's not working, so maybe we can go out to lunch and have something nice. I like Marukame Udon if we can go there. Um, although she's got a membership at some club now with a gym or something, and they've got food there, so she might want to go there. And then the rest of the week we've got Builder Dude, and then it's the weekend again. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's been a little bit hard to get filming time in. Um, uh, what else is happening? I don't know, I've been trying to disconnect from politics, that's going sort of okay, but then every now and then I see something on Facebook and it's really hard not to just write out a rant. I just have to be like, no. Be calm. No one, like, you know, saying what you think about it isn't gonna change anything. Like, I've just sort of got to this point where I'm like, look, I can't change these things. It stresses me out to know about them, to think about them, to try and express an opinion. Especially when, like, I'm not really sure where my opinion is sometimes, because I'm trying to get everyone's perspective and decide for myself. Um, so I get a little bit stressed about, what's my opinion? Here's a thought, but then what about this idea? And then what about this? And maybe I'm taking this too far. I don't know. I posted in the community tab, a video by Telltale te tell tell Atheist, I think. Uh, I don't know, it's about, um, is feminism a cult or something? 
And it's talking about SJW and anti-SJW philosophies. And if you watch that video, you'll basically get what I think. So I don't need to say anything more, but I'm just trying not to, um, not to worry too much about that politics. Also, like, local politics. I'm just tired, really. Like, the Liberal Party federally are generally not doing things I like, but the Labour Party has its own issues and so I'm not thrilled with them either and there's like no party that I like and it's really hard to go in and weigh up um, out of some of those groups who's worse than who. So I'm just going to wait until the local candidates are all finalised and listed and I can go and research them individually and you know some of their more specific policies and then I'll decide. And then with the state government, oh my god. Because, like, we've got the Liberals in power in New South Wales as well, and I like that they're actually doing something, because apparently, I mean, I was too young and not paying attention, but apparently the previous Labour government, who was in for ages, didn't really stay on top of infrastructure. Um, so the current Liberal government's playing catch-up on some stuff. There's some stuff they haven't done that I would like them to do, but at least they're doing something. Um, they've done some things I do like, actually. There's, like, a bus that takes me a long way that I like. Um, oh, and then there's that other bus that's pretty good. Um, and then there's some things I'm a bit like, I'm not sure why you're doing that. I think that's not a great idea. Like, it's something, and maybe when it's finished, we'll all realise actually it was a good idea. But I'm not entirely convinced at this stage. Sydney is a bit of a construction battleground at the moment. It's um, everywhere you go, there's something being built. It's just nuts. You know, I'd, I'd like that to calm down, but you know, if things haven't been done, you kind of just have to suck it up and do it, right? So I like that. Um, and when it comes to the Labour Party, oh my God, they got rid of Luke Foley and now they've got this other dude, Daly. I followed him on Facebook for a bit just to figure out what kind of a dude he was and what I think about that. And I don't like his face. <laughs> Which is a little bit shallow of me, but I don't like his face. I uh, also like some of the things he's said on that, and some of the policies, they're just like random handouts that don't, they're, they're all band-aid kind of things that won't last and don't solve anything long-term. Like giving kids free public transport to anywhere. When I was a kid, it was like free public transport just to and from school. And here's one is like everywhere. I think with Opal, maybe things got a little bit fucked up. I haven't been following but you know like hey let's chuck free public transport at kids okay great so kids can get around but if the trains suck then they're gonna get free travel to nowhere <laughs> kind of that's an exaggeration but you know we do still have problems um with our transport system which you know i think that's what the liberals are trying to fix whether or not they're being successful is another question it's a bit hard to gauge until more things are completed because there's so much stuff they're doing that's causing a lot of disruption but you know no pain no gain um and they've got a bunch of stuff like that and then the the daily he i saw him post a thing where he's hanging out with the sda who are the union whose agreements I worked under for ages because they're just everywhere in retail. Um, when I was at Kodak, that was right around work choices, so I didn't really have any rights at that time or didn't know what they were, so I didn't get paid well there. But then before that at McDonald's, SDA agreement. After that at Officeworks, SDA agreement. And I fucking hate the SDA because they make all these deals. I wasn't even an SDA member and I'm working under their shitty deals where they, like, muck up penalty rates and stuff which meant like on Sunday my Sunday team was great we were awesome at Officeworks the Sunday team um you know but because there were no penalty rates on Saturdays you ended up with only the most desperate least skilled people working on a Saturday and so quite often on a Sunday we'd come in see all the mistakes and have to clean them all up because, you know, we worked in the printing department and so we're, you know, dealing with customers' orders who that haven't been taken properly, haven't been quoted properly, don't have enough instructions, have things wrong with them, you know. And we don't really live in a 24-7 economy if I can't go to my bank in the middle of the night 
for person to person interaction. So, you know, fuck off with that argument, basically. But anyway, that's another ramble. I won't go into too many details, but when I saw him with the SDA, I was just like, look, Labour is meant to be the party of unions. And you're with a union that isn't a real union. They keep making bad deals for the workers. And then they go and spend union money on weird campaigns, like, with religious ideology attached to them. And that's, like, you know, unions are meant to be for the workers, not for your religious ideology. It's just, like, fuck off SDA and daily. If you don't know that the SDA is shit, you're, you're shit. <laughs> Ah, oh, I mean, occasionally maybe the SDA does something worthwhile to give the illusion of them being a decent union, but they're really not and they can fuck off. Um, anyway. So I don't like Daly at all. And I don't know what actual solutions he has, because most of the time he complains. And, like, a lot of opposition leaders do that, where they just complain without giving solutions. I think Bill Shorten's strength at the federal level... His strength is that he has, actually is giving solutions, even if I don't always agree with his ideas. At least he's saying what their party is going to do if they get in, how they propose to fix something like that. You know, if you're going to be a politician, have some guts and give your solution instead of just complaining about what the government's doing all the time. Um, you know, you're a politician, you're supposed to come up with solutions, not just whine. Whining is my job. You, you, if you're gonna lead the country, actually have some ideas on how you're gonna lead. Because, like, I don't have any ideas on how to lead. I'd probably just start World War Three with North Korea and make sure everyone gets bombed so we, like, the planet can start over and we won't have to worry about any of this stuff. So, you know, that's why I'm not gonna be a politician. I'm not gonna be any kind of world leader. I'm just gonna whine and complain. Um, no, so I don't like state labor, but on the liberal side, back to them, you know, they do some good things, some questionable things, but they also keep making some really dumb mistakes, and I'm just like, <sighs> it doesn't matter though, because my electorate always votes for the same people in the lower house, so the only thing that matters, both in state and federal politics, for me, really, is the senate vote, so I've got to try and figure out what's the best senate to hopefully not fuck things up, but then again, I'm also only one vote, so I shouldn't think too hard about it, because, you know, I'm just going to be added to the vote of the masses. My vote may swing things slightly more in one direction. But, um, yeah, I don't know. You see, like, me rambling just now for however long that was, is the kinds of things that go through my head, and I'm just not happy with anything in politics. And then, like, what, there's American politics as well? I don't even get a vote in that, so why should I worry? It's just going to stress me out. Like, I can see on one hand you want to be a good citizen for your country and then citizen of the world and all that kind of stuff. But for someone like me, my opinion's just... I, I don't fit into any particular group, so I couldn't ever join any activist group because activists... There's always those crazy people, and then no particular group holds the same mix of ideas that I do. So that's not going to work, unless I wanted to sell out some of the, the ideas I have. But I don't think I do, because most of the activist groups always get a little bit too crazy in whatever direction. So I can't do anything about that there. And um, I don't know. All I've got is my vote. That's all I have. That's all I can do to change anything. So with American politics, I don't have a vote there. I'll just try not to let that stress me out. So the best thing I can do is disconnect. Same with most, th most things around the place. I mean, I guess there are some things that affect Australian security, but um, there's nothing I can really do about that until it comes time to vote. So uh, I guess I should try not to worry too much until then. It's hard, though, because I just naturally worry about stuff and think about stuff. So there's that. But if I try not to actively seek out things, because for a while I was binging on a lot of that sort of YouTube. Sorry I'm not looking at the camera. It's just like I am tired. Um, but also not having my glasses on, and I keep getting distracted by the way the neighbor's house has these little bits. Um, I think that even, like, you know, the, the roof of his house is a bit exposed. Like, the slats are slightly apart. Anyway, I'm getting confused. Uh, yeah, no, um, politics, hey. 
It's not fun. I can't change anything about the world, so let's just try not to stress. Um, I don't know. I think with 2016 being such a crazy year, it was hard for a lot of us to not get sucked into that. Um, but yeah, you know, most of this stuff I have no control over. Um, a good deal of it doesn't really affect my life, so there's that. And, you know, if you try and argue about things on the internet, you just get stressed because people misinterpret or, you know, they get overly emotional about their positions. Um, I think the bickering is worse if you're, like, in America and Canada. And, um, some parts of the UK sound a bit uh, awful. I don't know. But I don't really get out that much, so I couldn't really tell you how bad it is in Australia. I just think Australia being kind of a laid-back country... Um, we have disagreements, but it's, for most people, it's just like, eh, shit, eh, she'll be right, mate. You know, we'll be fine. Um, you do get, like, the little pockets of activists, but you just don't have to hang with them. Or, you know, if you're with someone and they bring up something, just be like, oh, yeah, all right, don't say too much. <sighs> and then, yeah, I don't know, on Facebook, try not to reply to things so much. How long was that me just sort of talking off the top of my head? Almost half an hour. Um, can we drag it out to half an hour or should I just go and like... I probably shouldn't have a nap now at this stage because otherwise I won't sleep so great. Finally, temperature... The, oh, bloody temperature the other day when it was 35 or something or 37 even. I don't know. Temperatures cooled down again, especially at night, so... There's that, but I woke up pretty hot and sweaty. I think I was having a weird dream, and then, like, you know, sort of burst out of the dream, and it was just like, ah, maybe it's because I had the blanket on when I probably shouldn't have, but sometimes the blanket's nice, you know? Ah, uh, man. Um, what else have I got? I think that might be it. I should go because I'm really like, you know, I think because maybe it's because I'm tired that I keep looking at the neighbor's house like that. I've done sort of something like that when I'm in therapy sessions and seeing the doctor and, you know, just appointments in general. I start looking at like this geometry of things I'm seeing. I don't know. I wonder if it's like a some kind of coping mechanism, except why do I need a coping mechanism when I'm just talking to a camera? Um, because this is a different situation to being at the doctor and stuff. I don't know. That's kind of a weird thing about me. I feel like I had one more thought, but it's escaped me as I've gone on tangent after tangent. I don't know. But yeah, I think I should probably just not have a nap. I need to try and stay awake, so I will load this stuff onto the computer, see if I can edit something to get it online, because I don't think I've scheduled anything to go up tomorrow, which, like, I'm just rambling to myself, because by the time you see this video, I will have posted stuff, so whatever, um, but, yeah, no, the things I think about, no, maybe I'll, I'll start loading this stuff onto the computer, get my computer to render stuff. Maybe I should read a book because I want to finish a book by the end of the month and then I've really got to think about what I'm going to paint. So maybe I'll paint this weekend when everyone's home and I can't really make videos. I could be editing videos. That's not so bad, but I should also paint a bit. Because um, also it's awkward when you're editing a video and like it's still your voice coming out of the computer and someone's walking past and then you start feeling embarrassed all over again. <laughs> oh... Oh my god, the worst thing is if people try to watch my videos when I'm in the room. That is like the worst thing ever. Um, so, yeah, I don't like it when people I know in real life tell me they've been watching my videos. I find that awkward. So if you're someone in my life, good work not telling me about it. I'm going to go. I'm going to make some tea. That's what I'll do. I'll make some tea, get something to nibble so that I don't wither away and die because I haven't had lunch. I had that big breakfast, but I haven't had lunch yet, so I just have something to nibble. <gasps> Those veggie straws, they're really yummy. Tea, veggie straws, load stuff onto the computer. I could always play a video game if I really need to, but it, uh, I don't know. And then Mikey will come home and then I'll be like, hey Mikey, and he'll ignore me. Um, okay, that's the plan. I will see you next time. You want me to fall in
I just figure the fewer the words, less crazy you are. Ah!